Claude Giroux. Can I interest anyone in Claude Giroux? Like when I saw that, I think it's Pierre Lebrun that report. I don't have it in my notes here, but I'm pretty sure it was Pierre Lebrun that the Oilers are interested in Claude Giroux, and he's at least seemingly showing interest back. Um, Friedman said it too. Friedman said it too as well. So what does everybody also, think about I said Claude it. Giroux? And Dan said uh, it too. First off, since I'm practicing my French, uh, Jaru, I believe is how uh, you would Jaru. <laughs> Jaru. <laughs> Jaru. 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 I have <laughs> French, and I can tell you that that is in the ballpark at least. Thank you. Um, if it wouldn't have been two of the bigger insiders in hockey reporting it, if it would have been like some fringe whatever, I would have rolled my eyes and been like, shut up. It's not happening. Because it doesn't feel like something that should happen. And then you kind of peel back the layers of the reports for this thing. And it's like, okay, you know, there may not be a huge market of teams offering a multi-year deal to Giroux, who are also teams who can contend. If the Oilers now have this perception that with McDavid and Drysaddle, they're just a few pieces away from being a routine conference final, cup final team, then all of a sudden they're a team that players look at and go, hey, we can win there. If you're a forward, you're going, I can win there and I can pile in a ton of goals with Connor McDavid and Leon Drysaddle. That sounds like fun. And if Claude Giroux's options are a one-year deal from Toronto, a seven-year deal from Ottawa just to go home and have the feel-good story, and then like a one-year deal from Florida, one-year deal from Colorado. And Edmonton goes, no, no, we'll give you a three-year deal. It'll be four million, four and a half million a season or something like that. And your family can have some stability. We'll give you a no-movement clause. And you get a chance to win. And you get a little bit more money. And you get to play with McDavid and Drysdale. Like The case for Edmonton to be intriguing for Giroux is actually pretty realistic, which is weird because before the idea was reported, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. So last year, just before the other boys give their takes, Giroux had 21 goals split between Philly and Florida. And uh, what is that? 65 points. So he's still productive despite being 35 or 34 years old. And also another thing that could be intriguing to the Oilers, despite the fact that he plays on the wing a lot these days, he can still take draws. And, and very, he's a right shot. Well. Uh, Dan or Rick, how about a slightly used Claude Giroux? Well, the best part about Jaru is it sounds like Evander who, and <laughs> I am all for that. Uh, I To me, it's an upgrade in the sense that you don't have the question marks with the Giroux like you do in my opinion with an Evander game, uh, giving him extra years. And so, yeah, I mean, especially at that number, it's that's that's the part that's really exciting to me is is the possibility of a Hyman, Giroux, Pugliarvi line, amazing. All those things are exciting, but but the value that he would bring to this team at that kind of a number is huge. Well, I was going to ask: Is this just the Claude Giroux thing? Is it just the Evander Kane hedge? Wow, I, I like I don't know. I feel like. To me, I would say it's, it's an upgrade, but yes, I think that's a fair comment. And then we have to start talking about the Evander Kane arbitration case that could carry into mm-hmm. the middle of, of uh, free agency. I almost view Giroux as the safer option, right? Like with Claude Giroux, you are in all likelihood getting between 60 and 75 points next season. If you look at his historic numbers and the fact that he'd get to play with some legit skill, you're getting a comfortable middle of the road or like good top six wingers going to score you a pile of points at a decent price tag, but not super long-term. He's also not going to score you 45 goals or 40 goals next season, which if Evander Kane, if he peaks next year for 82 games, he's scoring you 40 plus. And, you know, the high end of Kane is maybe better than the high end of Giroux, but the low end of what Kane can do, like we saw in Winnipeg, Buffalo, and San Jose, the low end of Evander Kane, especially towards the end of that contract, could be ugly and you at least don't have that drastic of a downside with Claude Giroux. Rick, how do you feel about Giroux versus Kane versus who the fuck cares? Well, like Tyler was saying, I think uh I think Giroux might be their their secondary option. And I can see how he'd be a little safer, but I think um it de- it, de- it all depends on how Kane's situation goes. Like does he come over with his current contract which only has what 3 years left on it? Mm-hmm. Do you have to re-sign him to something that's gonna be set six, seven years long? I mean, if we can get that three million dollar to so the three-year contract over here for what is it, seven and change? Uh, if we can get that over here, I like that because the one thing that stands out to me is he's more of a goal scorer than Giroud, and I think we need a goal scorer. 
Sure. Doesn't don't doesn't the three million dollars that you'd save with a Giroux and be able to part port into something else that this team needs more important than yeah. an Evander Kane for that an extra ten another, goals? Well, that could be so, the Dan's point. Another, but it's not forward. an extra ten goals. It's like an extra. It could be extra 20, 25 goals if he gets up to forty five goals. Yeah, but you could look at you know maybe some extra primary assists Giroux picks up that help you out. You know maybe Giroux's a better fit because he's a right shot. On your power play as a centerman, if he's winning the extra draws, maybe I don't know if he kills penalties or not. We've just we've, we've, gone we've gone through this. We've gone through this so. We've gone through better than Derek We just have. We've gone just through this for forever with with guys who are always just like choosing to pass it, choosing to pass it, choosing to pass it. We've sat here and wanted a, a shooter, a goal scorer for you know since back in Hemsky's days. How yeah. many times do we dust it off? Too many times on the power play right now. I just, I just like that mentality of, of a one shot goal scorer, of a guy who wants to score goals. Um, I just I, I think that's really that's really important to this team. So let's say you're Ken Holland and you have a pile of eight million dollars in this hypothetical. You can either get Kane and Russell or Kulak and Giroux. Which duo do you choose? I think in that scenario, if those are my options, I do oh. Giroux and Kulak because Kulak is significant upgrade over Russell in the back end. Yeah, I think I go with that too. I just and that's just the value. Really hoping that's there. just not the option. 